Hello, I'm Vincent Layton. As president of the Lacey Township Chamber of Commerce, it gives me great pleasure to introduce this special program. As a community organization, the Chamber is involved in many township projects which benefit and enhance the community. The Chamber is proud to be a sponsor of this presentation, Lacey Lions Football and the Community, a winning combination. It highlights our community's growth and shows our young residents growing and achieving within the framework of a supportive community. It's pretty quiet here right now, but on the weekends in autumn, this field is alive with the excitement of championship high school football because this is the home of the 1988 and 1989 state champion, Lacey Lions. At these games, the idea of teamwork among student athletes and coaches and among Lacey Township, the high school, and the Lions can clearly be seen. In Lacey, the success of the program is the direct result of the teamwork and cooperation among many fine people, from the experienced coach Lou Versillo and his staff, to the all-state athlete Keith Elias and the rest of the players, to township officials such as Phil Lucarelli and Assemblyman Chris Connors, to the parents of the players, and to the thousands of Lacey residents and business people who help support the program. This teamwork is not only the strength of this excellent football program, but the exceptional physical strength of the players is the direct result of the great spirit of cooperation and commitment of the people of Lacey Township, since it was through community effort that the team's weight room came to be. Let's head there now and meet some of the outstanding student athletes who've helped to bring about these past two championship seasons. very big commitment to play football at Lacey High School. Um, football is not like any other sport here. It seems that the season, football season is the longest out of uh, all the sports here, but it's the most fun. And once the season's over, we have to start like thinking about the next season. You have to get in the weight room and lift in, getting ready. Weight training is very important to our team, I think, because we don't have like a real big school, a real fast school. We got a lot of little talent and um, I think we need to weight train because it uh, helps us bring out our potential on the football field. Weight training, especially off season, has a lot to do on uh, how you perform during the season. You can concentrate more on your technique and concentrate more on the game. You're not so much worried about conditioning and uh, trying to stay in shape during the season. After winning our second state championship, it's I hopefully think that this school will want to push themselves and come in this weight room and work out to their best ability and push themselves to win another state championship and hopefully that every year that every team would want that state championship more and more because it's something that the school sees everybody wearing their jackets and rings and, and it means a lot to a lot of people and the community gets more and more involved every year and people enjoy being around winners and I think being a winner is something special. Mm -hmm. 
That's the spirit of Lacey football as its first decade comes to a close. A time of growth, both for the school and the community. Lacey Township was incorporated in 1871 with its prime areas along Lacey Road, an eight mile straight run from Bamber Lake to the shipping dock at Forked River and Main Street, now Route 9. In the late 1800s, Lacey became a popular vacation area with the bay, the country air, hunting and fishing the major draws to those visiting the township's many inns. The population grew slowly until the 1950s when the Garden State Parkway was completed and the 1960s with the construction of the Oyster Creek Nuclear Generating Station. Since then, Lacey has seen a population explosion which has changed the township's early rural character to a suburban one. Today, Lacey still offers a variety of recreational activities to its year-round residents and seasonal visitors as well. The State Marina is a major attraction for private boating. The Popcorn Zoo is a popular place for weekend outings, and the area lakes provide outdoor family activities. Along with this, Lacey has seen tremendous growth in business activity, including professional services, retail, and industry. The busy areas of the township remain Lacey Road and Route 9 where the township business park is located. As Lacey expanded, more schools were needed. And by the late 70s, it was clear the township would benefit from having its own high school, which opened in September 1981 with just over 600 students in four grades. I think uh, high school football means a lot to the community. Uh, it's, it's a sense of belonging, it's a commitment. There's a lot of uh, camaraderie. Uh, I can remember uh, not too long ago our kids went to a school, a regional school, and it just didn't seem the same. Now you go down to the street by the school, we have paw prints uh, on the street, we have a new tower in town that has the Lacey Lion insignia. Uh, just a good feeling uh, that the community is behind the school and really supports what the kids are doing. In 1981, the football program got off to a strong start as future Harvard graduate Greg Musselman scored the first Lion touchdown in the first game versus Lakewood. The premier victory came just one week later over Pleasantville. This helped establish the winning tradition as even the first year the Lions were over 500. And in their second year went on to a shore conference championship. Some of the big names in those early years still echo in the displays over the weight room. The mid 80s saw a rebuilding period for Lacey but still a time of all state and all shore team members. The efforts during these years helped to set the stage for the past two state championships. It's almost impossible to look at the first state championship year, 1988, without seeing the outstanding efforts of junior Keith Elias, whose 1,500 yards and 156 points, along with returning Group 2 All-Star Chris Lombardo and tight end Carl Taracone, helped to lead the Lions to that high level. Coming into the 1989 season, the Lions were determined to do what few teams have ever done, to repeat as state champions. The first step toward that goal, the big and strong team from Tom's River High School North. That first quarter was indeed a tough one, as an early penalty called back a Lacey touchdown and a Lion fumble deep in their own territory helped North to jump to an early 7-0 lead. But the Lions came back quickly to tie it up with the first of four TDs on the day for Keith Elias. Lacey captured the season opener with a 33-15 win over the Mariners. While the beginning of the North game was tough, the Red Bank Catholic matchup stayed tough throughout as the Lions had to use a mixed offense and a strong second half defense to stop the Casey's 21-14 in a non-conference away game. Quarterback Garrett Gardy passed for 117 yards and ran for two touchdowns with Keith Elias adding the other. The Lions came home 2-0 to face a competitive freehold borough team in the first conference contest of the season. And game three looked a lot like the season opener as the Colonials took an eight nothing lead and an interception on the first play from scrimmage. In the second quarter, the Lacey defense began to gain momentum as Brian Coffey scooped up a freehold fumble and ran for a touchdown. But the point after failed, leaving the halftime score eight six. After a hard fought but fruitless third quarter, the Lions came back with a Brian Coffey field goal and a Keith Elias TD in the fourth to go on to a satisfying 15 eight victory over freehold Burrow. At 3-0, the Lions were obviously off to a great start for the 89 season, again charging up the school and the community. Lacey Assemblyman Phil Lucarelli sums up the team's impact on the township. Of course, here in our community, it's a definite positive impact. It casts a positive image upon our youth as a, as a whole uh, in our community. 
Uh, it's like a David and Goliath type story. You have a rural community such as uh, Lacey Township going up against some of the bigger city schools. All-state senior tailback Keith Elias sees the success from the team's point of view. The school really got a, a good dose of tradition going because uh, now that now the younger kids saw what it takes to get a state championship, the sophomores and the freshmen saw how we work really hard, and, and they know that um, the state championship is not an un unattainable goal. In the next step toward that goal, their hard work would be put to a test. In game number four, as the Lions travel to Raritan to take on a tough, physical Rocket team. That strength was matched as the Lions went toe-to-toe -to, -toe to wear the Rockets down. It was a hard fight, though, not won until the second half, as Raritan actually led 7-6 as the teams went to the locker rooms. That edge was quickly erased as Keith Elias scampered 43 yards for a touchdown on the opening drive of the second half, and Lacey went on to a 32-7 non-conference victory that Elias called a total team effort. It was just that kind of effort that would be needed in Game 5 as the Lions traveled to Wall to take on the Scarlet Knights, a team determined to stop the run, which they did. But they couldn't stop the passing game as Garrett Gardy took to the air for three touchdowns and 188 yards in leading Lacey to a 35-10 victory, marked by great offensive shows of force, featuring outstanding play by tight end Ron Laird, and receivers Jeff Brewer, Mike Tholen, and Rob Smith, and Keith Elias, who even though he was held to 42 yards on the ground, did score three touchdowns, raising his total to 13 on the year. It was the passing game that changed the momentum in the second period, as at one point, Garrett Gardy went four for five for 72 yards, leading to a touchdown as Keith Elias scored on a one-yard plunge. From then on, Gardy and the Lions were unstoppable. The game was also marked by an incredibly strong and varied defense engineered by Coach Versillo through his defensive coordinator, Ed Heffernan. That defense included this dramatic goal line stand. The whole night was marked by outstanding defensive work on the line, in the air, and in the backfield with excellent efforts from strong safety Dennis Cameron. Hard efforts too from Dwayne Goodzek and Rob Jacobson. Mike Potashar, Mike Tholen, Ron Laird, and Pete Brunner. Mike Stefanelli, Scott Hebrew, and Jason Torrey. With that, the Lions took the long drive down the parkway with a 5-0 record. Looking ahead to a Friday night clash with Freehold Township. Once again, a close first half, as the Lions may have taken their opponents too lightly. But in the second half, Lacey was all business, as Keith Elias, with the help of Coach Stratton's awesome front line, Dave Egan, Keith Bullets, Mike Peterson, Matt Martin, Scott Hebrew, and Chris Campo, gained record yardage and national recognition. Keith Elias' state record, 391 yards on 41 carries, is the icing on the cake for the Lacey Lions offense, which since its inception has relied heavily on its running backs. As early as 1982, fullback Andy Pasqua made the All-State Group 2 second team, and along with fellow backs Jay Donnelly and Tom Donlin, helped bring home the first conference championship. John Savarese, a member of that team and now a local business owner, recalls the pride of that accomplishment. We're history in this town now and it'll never be forgotten. But Lacey's history is not only the strong running game and the big victory. It's the tradition of hard work in practice and in the classroom. Area chiropractor Michael Kirk sees both community and individual benefits of that hard work. I, I think football brings a sense uh, to the community that we see our young people working together, uh, working as a unit, trying to achieve a certain goal, 
and uh, the ultimate goal is to be very successful. And I think that success will carry with them from high school on to college and graduate school and just carry right through and be very successful citizens. 1988 senior standout Carl Terracone, now a player at Rutgers University, recalls the extra effort he needed for success in academics. By my junior and senior year, I realized that my grades weren't good enough for me to continue to go on and play football. So I had to get my grades up. And, uh, you know, no matter how good you are at football, if you don't have the grades, it really doesn't mean too much. I feel I'm very prepared going to college now because uh, the most important thing going to college is to work really hard. And at, here at Lacey, you develop an intense wor work ethic, not only um, on the practice field, but also in the weight room. And if I can just carry forth what I've, what I've done here, working very hard on the weights and on the, on the practice field, I know I can be successful in college and the years to come. For Keith Elias, that work would pay off in another record-setting performance in game number seven with Monsignor Donovan. Next up for the Lions was a trip to Manchester Township, where the Hawks had prepared well to defend against Keith Elias, but not Garrett Gardy and the rest of the Lacey team. The Lions clinched the top seed and home field advantage in the NJSIAA Group 3 playoffs with an impressive 29-6 victory to go 8-0 with only traditional rival Central Regional between Lacey and a perfect regular season. A Thanksgiving snowstorm forced postponement of the game until Saturday. Even then, it took extraordinary efforts by the ground crew and by Lacey contractor John Parker to clear the field in lots. This is the game for bragging rights in the Central Ocean County area. Wrights won by Central in the final seconds in 88, but regained in a big way by the 89 Lions team. The game featured intense defensive play from the Lacey starting unit and special pass rushing by seniors Scott Bishop and Joe Bartulo, along with key interceptions from Mike Dolan and Brian Coffey. And a big sack by Keith Elias, who also scored the game's first touchdown and ran for 269 yards. It was also an impressive day for Lacey's sophomore, Dave Cottrell, with a number of short yardage gains. Damn, they got it off. And it was a game of long gainers for Garrett Gardy and for Keith Elias. As the Lions got their revenge with a 34-13 victory over Central Regional. With the regular season closed out at a perfect 9-0, the team looked to the playoffs. I, at the beginning of the year, I wasn't thinking states, but I knew it wasn't impossible, and um, I knew we could do it. Just as they had done it last year, a game burned into the memory of all those involved. Our most memorable moment in the game had to have been the first state game in 1988 when we played Woodrow Wilson, when Carl Tarracone kicked the field goal with time running, running out. And I, I looked up through the goalpost and saw the ball going through the uprights. Right then I knew we won, and it was like, that's so hot for me because it, it felt great that we, that we won it for a team. I think my most memorable uh, game experience was when we beat uh, Woodrow Wilson for the championship last year. Coach Rosillo called me in for the field goal considering it was our only hope, either that or one more play. And I connected with the field goal, and the rest is history. 
An important part of that history is Lacey's involvement in special football events, including several players in the annual All Shore Classics, the New Jersey Coaches All-Star Games, and even international all-star competition in Italy, where Tim Noren, Craig Sicardo, and Mike Berardo participated. Never in a million years I think I'd be chasing an Italian quarterback in Italy somewhere. You know, when, you, when you're young, when you're growing up, uh, you picture playing pro football or big college somewhere, you know. You never think of playing over in Europe. It was a great experience. As was the 88 victory over Wilson. But this was 1989, and the rumblings from Camden had Woodrow Wilson craving revenge. But before that matchup could come about, the Lions had to face a tough mainland team, which proved to be one of the biggest that they'd meet all year. But the Lions went right at them with strong defense matching size for size. Let's listen to the original play-by-play. Williams again, looking to pass, under some pressure, and he's going to be sacked. The Mustangs, this is Williams to throw, faking, looking, 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 under pressure, and he's going to be sacked again. That second sack was by Mike Peterson and Dwayne Goodzak, who both had an outstanding day, along with Ed Waka, whose strong play helped defend against Mainland's potent running attack, which had powered the Mustangs to a 10-0 record to date. Lacey Township, defense setting up there. Looks like they might be coming after the punt of Dennis Williams as he lines up deep. There's a snap, a little off, but he gets it away. When the Lions got the ball, they began a drive, which would end up in the game's first points. This is Gardy handing off to Elias, and he jumps over a defender, breaking it out to the outside. Everyone typed. This is Elias coming up, breaking to the left. Boy, great line surge that time. Mustang's going for the block here. Ball's down, it's up. It's good! When Mainland got the ball back, they drove for a touchdown. And he's in for the touchdown, so the Mustangs have answered the call. 10, 9, 8, that's it. That's the end of the first half of play with the Mustangs leading Lacey Township by a score of 7-3. In the second half, Lacey's defense came out strong, stopping the Mustangs' ground game. And a quarterback draw, but he, Kenny Williams, is going to go no place if Mike Peterson was right there to make the hit, and we'll have a punting... Again, uh, over the left side with the two, and this time he was hit right around the ankles by Brian Coffey. And their passing attack. Uh, with the one-handed grab, turns it upfield, and looked like he ran for a big yardage, but just about got back to the line of scrimmage. And Mainland had to punt. There, high spiraling punt that will roll out of bounds. Looks and to be about the nine yard line. And tight ball game, seven to three. Three plays later, on a third and one, Keith Elias exploded up the middle. Elias breaks through, breaks out in the open. Mo Clutch trailing him. Elias down the sidelines. Will he catch him? It doesn't oh, look it. Elias to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Keith Elias. With the score 10 7, the Lacey defense continued to hold the Mustangs in critical situations. Throwing long downfield. And it's almost intercepted. Second down. That's Ward in motion. This is Klotz. Klotz over the right side. Back to two. Trying that play that he was successful with before. And he's down close to the first down marker again. Off back to two. And two is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Coffey. Big defensive play by the Lions of Lacey Township. Mainland had to settle for a tying field goal. It's up. It's good. good. But the Lions came right back. Bills can't play the big tackle you saw coming out. Quarterback Snake. And he has it. And that's again Elias breaking loose over the left side. Straight arming someone. Bouncing to the five. And yes. With a two-point conversion and another TD, Lacey went up 25-10, where it stood until the last second score by Mainland. But the Lions would get another shot at revenge-minded Woodrow Wilson. Listen to the highlights of the original play-by-play -by, -play by Adelphia Cable's Steve McGullum. First quarter, we're scoreless. Elias has nothing. Try to turn the corner. Keith Elias gets the first down. Guardy wanting to throw once again. Fires across the field for Schoenberg. Touchdown! Charlie Schoenberg had a great pattern. Super play. There's Ron Laird. This game is dedicated to him. He's a senior linebacker. He made a all-county team. We already has. He does a, a great job. Frisbee facing. 
facing the rush, and Brian Coffey with the sack. Frisbee firing down the middle of the field. Touchdown to Ron Johnson. And five, they're at the 30. They're going to take their last time. That's again the boot like by guard. He fires to Eric Jacobson. He's wide open. Jacobson has the first down. And Wilson having some confusion on defense here. There's Elias. He gets around the corner. He's in touchdown. If it's a timeout for your team, you can certainly go out on the field. Signaling timeout with 20 seconds to go. Uh, Garrett Gardy looking the pass. It's complete to Jason Benichuk. Third down, yard and a half. Lacey at the 29 of Woodrow Wilson. Gardy running it himself. He has the first down. As you said, just trotted in. That's the second of the day, and that touchdown. And it, Wilson to air it out again. Frisbee gets away from Brian Coffey, and he shows his running ability. Frisbee wants to throw. Fires. Oh, incomplete, and it's caught by Ron Johnson. He catches the tip pass, and he's going to have a touchdown. Touchdown, Ron Johnson. Mike, when he's getting hit, He's spinning. But hopefully he won't do that. There's a pitch to Elias, right side. Lot of blocking. Third down six from the 24. Guardy gives it up, takes it to Elias, goes down field. Touchdown, Jason Benichuk. Five, Ron Johnson in motion. Norman Frisbee, two touchdown passes today. Nothing going, he's tackled. Frisbee, back to pass. The pressure's on, he's sacked. Number four, Bill Bolger with the sack. 50 seconds to go. 5.54 to go. They lead 21-16. Keith Elias up the middle on the delay. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Keith Elias. I'll tell you, though, it, Frisbee facing the rush. Gets away from Brian Coffey. Fires. There's a wide open Brian McNair. Touchdown. At this point, the Lions had to hold the ball for just over two minutes, which the Shore's number one offense would do. With another thrilling victory over Woodrow Wilson, Coach Lou Versillo and his Lacey Lions achieve their goal of repeating as state champs. Assemblyman Chris Connors sums up the township residents' pride in their team. I think our Lacey Lions football team has given us residents yet another reason why we should be proud to live in Lacey Township. Having won a state championship and then going on to the next year to win another state championship shows the type of commitment and the competitive spirit that the youth of Lacey Township have. We want to congratulate the Lions on their outstanding achievement and the community of Lacey Township on its growth and its commitment to excellence. They both made their marks in the Shore area in the past decade, and we wish them continued success. We at the Production House would like to thank the people of Lacey Township for helping us to produce Lacey Lions football in the community. We would also like to thank the people at Adelphia Cable who made airtime for this program possible. Most especially, we'd like to thank Jerry Clark from Adelphia Cable, who was instrumental in acquiring the game footage from Mainland and Woodrow Wilson. Thanks to all for helping us produce Lacey Lions football and the community. Would do. 
Right. With another thrilling victory over Woodrow Wilson, Coach Lou Versillo and his Lacey Lions achieve their goal of repeating as state champs. Assemblyman Chris Connors sums up the township residents' pride in their team. I think our Lacey Lions football team has given us residents yet another reason why we should be proud to live in Lacey Township. Having won a state championship and then going on to the next year to win another state championship shows the type of commitment and the competitive spirit that the youth of Lacey Township have. 